Well, welcome back. Well, the Senate approved a temporary government funding bill to avert a weekend shutdown of the government. Lawmakers now have until December 23rd to craft a full-year omnibus deal. Uh, the White House calling this, quote, major test of the willingness of House Republicans to put governing above the ultra-MAGA agenda, claims Joe Biden. Joining me right now is Nebraska Congressman and senior member of the House Ways and Means Committee, Adrian Smith. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being good. here. Can you give us this assessment of where we are in this spending? Good to see you. Thank you for having me on. Uh, this spending scenario seems all too familiar. Uh, the, the patterns of spending in Washington need to be changed. I'm glad we can change the majority now in the House, uh, but this spending uh, occasion here needs to change. Uh, we need to, to bring, uh, bring smarter spending, less spending overall, whether it's discretionary or otherwise. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do. And, and that is why you voted against this. Some of your House GOP colleagues, though, voted for the stopgap bill, even though you voted against it. Tell us why you voted against it and what you see happening in the coming weeks. Well, I voted against it because it, it tees up a scenario that just uh, spends more money uh, all the way into uh, about a year, from, or ultimately a, a year from now. Uh, we, we need a scenario where we can uh, get us through uh, the, the end of this Democrat majority so that Republicans in the House uh, can have more say uh, in the spending so that we can bring more accountability to the spending. Uh, how much spending are you expecting? I mean, we've already seen all of this reckless spending lead to 40-year high inflation. So what is your plan? Well, the, the fact of the matter is, you know, the president and the Democrats are trying to push us in a direction of bringing back the, the child tax credit that's structured in such an irresponsible way. They, they want to uh, go back to those monthly payments that, that triggered inflation. You know, the president, want, he, he's basically bragging about inflation numbers lately, and yet groceries are still way up. Energy, has so many things that everyday needs uh, are, are still so expensive. Well, that's right. Steve Moore, jump in here, because when you actually look at inflation, while it's off of the highs of the year, Steve, food prices have not budged. We continue to see those essentials of food at elevated levels, Steve, because of this spending. Yeah, look, uh, by the way, Adrian's a good friend. Great to see you, my friend. But I got to tell you, um, people, conservatives are so angry right now at what is happening on Capitol Hill. And Adrian, I know you're one of the heroes on fighting this excessive spending. But I got to tell you, it's not just the Democrats, Maria, that are wanting this big spending spree right now, pre-Christmas. You look at what's happening in the Senate, they're larding this up with pork barrel projects. It's a big uh, $600 million giveaway to uh, Richard Shelby, who's the uh, Appropriations Committee chair. What I'm saying is Republicans, Adrian, you know this, need to be taking a chainsaw to this budget with the four trillion dollars extra spending and what we're seeing so far with Republicans bringing back earmarks agreeing to these big spending bills I, I think it's both a policy and a political disaster Maria your thoughts Adrian <laughs> yeah it's it, <laughs> that's why I'm glad we Republicans in the House can set the agenda beginning in January it, it's time mm -hmm. for us to come together and, and get every day possible that we can into next year uh, to to rally the troops uh, so that we can bring more accountability to spending as Steve points out uh, there, there are trends here that cannot be sustained but and, and we need we need more accountability hey, Adrian though no, uh, somebody's yeah. got to explain why it is two out of three Republicans in the House caucus, Maria, voted to bring back earmarks, the bridge to nowhere in Alaska, all these crazy special interest slices of bacon. That's exactly the opposite of what voters voted for when they voted Republicans to take over the House. Oh, yeah, I see that Liz Cheney was among those who voted for it. Well, how, how, how do you explain that, Congressman? Well, again, it, there are pet projects that exist. We have to get beyond that. We, we have to look yeah. at good, smart strategies so that, so that we can bring down that level of, of spending. You know, yeah. on the discretionary side, we, we need to uh, pursue a, across the budget a more strategic spending so that, so that we don't get backed into a corner and have to face tax increases that the American people do not need, do not want, right. and certainly would be bad for our economy. 
Well, he's talking about even more taxes. And so far, it's all the central banks doing the work here. I just want to point out that yesterday, it wasn't just the Bank of England and the European Central Bank. You also had the Swiss National Bank. You had the Philippine Central Bank, all raising rates by 50 basis points. Norway following suit, raising rates by 25 basis points. The ECB president, Christine Lagarde, said that one-third of the ECB team wanted a 75 basis point hike. That's how significant uh, they're looking at this issue, having to raise rates, because they're the only ones rowing the boat here in terms of uh, putting an end or pushing back on inflation. But I want to get to a new topic, Congressman, because a new Fox News poll finds that 64 percent of registered voters do not want President Biden to run for a second term. That compares to just 33 percent who say that they want him to run. A new CNN poll shows 59 percent of Democrat-leaning voters want somebody else on the 2024 ticket. Is this going to be one of the major talking points in 2023? Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Definitely. I think it will be a talking point, to provide many talking points. You know, the president likes to take uh, various victory laps when uh, there might be some small uh, amount of good news coming out. Uh, and yet, when you look at the policies that he has pushed, that he has prioritized, that has hurt our economy. It's hurt households. It's triggered more inflation, uh, the, the supply chain uh, crises that we've had, and yet no action on various uh, various topics like trade, uh, where, where we can help address the supply chain shortage with better trade policies and leveling the playing field. Uh, the American people don't like Joe Biden's policies, and I think that's reflected in the numbers. Well, it's going to be an interesting year ahead for sure with all of the investigations around his family as well. Congressman, it's good to see you. We'll be keeping a spotlight on all of that. Adrian Smith joining us this morning. Thank you. We